Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So I ranked all of my blasters, and I gave the top 10 best blasters in my collection. Now let's take a look at my mods. To clarify, when I mean mod, I'm not talking about just cosmetic mods like the Titan CS50 here, where the internals remain identical to how they were out of the box. I'm talking about complete overhauls, where I have given them spring upgrades, upgraded performance, more lubricant, everything, all the works, and a paint job. Or at least a paint job for most of these. There have been some where I didn't alter the paint just because I genuinely liked the way they looked out of the box, and you're going to see some of those later on. I'm also counting work in progress mods because, well, hell, almost every single one of them is a work in progress mod, and there are lots of work in progress mods going on all the time. So if I were to just exclude all the work in progress mods, this video would be uncomfortably short. But with that said, let's get started in ranking every single blaster that I have modified. Keep in mind, I have done all of these mods myself, except for one, which I will explain later. But with that said, let's get into it. At the very bottom of the list, we have this, which I have aptly titled the Berserkus, or the Circus Crusher, one of the other. I haven't decided because I never touch this thing. The only reason that I modified this blaster at all is because it literally did not work at all before. I reviewed this blaster a while ago and claimed that it was the absolute worst blaster in my collection. While it isn't really the absolute worst, there are some blasters that are just sins against God and sins against humanity, this one was definitely close to the top of that list, and my attempts were in vain at trying to make this thing usable, let alone good. Right now, the blaster doesn't have an air restrictor in it, it doesn't have any dark posts in it and I have stretched the spring a little bit but that's practically it. The internals of this blaster are super hard to get at and I didn't even bother giving it a paint job because I know I'm never even gonna touch this thing, not even use it for cosplay because the cylinder has to remain orange so that would immediately kill the cosplay potential as unless I wanted to kill the cylinder and just the way that it works is just so bad. The prime is so sticky and I just prefer the surge fire so much more. This blaster could have had some potential if Nerf just copied the surge fire internals on here but but as it stands now, this thing is just useless. Next up we've got the Golden Nugget, a blaster that I haven't made a video on because I just don't know how to. It's a reflex mod that doesn't really do much. All I did, again, was take the air restrictor out and remove the dart post so now it shoots half-length darts very jankily. Yeah, it doesn't really work that well to begin with, and shooting half-length darts doesn't give you much advantage over just shooting full-length darts. I will say though, I like the paint job, and I do still like the blaster because it's still a reflex. It's one of my favorite emergency pistols, but this mod was mainly just shoehorned in because I felt like modifying something, and this seemed like an easy mod. I had stood corrected by the end of that night. This is one of the most painfully difficult blasters I've ever had to modify in my life, and really, I don't think it was worth the trouble. I don't recommend modding one of these, not unless you have a drill or a ridiculous, ungodly amount of patience. Next we have the Shell Strike Plus, a sort of failed experiment that I just wanted to do because I was bored one day, and again, similarly to the Reflex, this was way more difficult than I had ever imagined to get the air restrictors out of. Again, I just took the air restrictors out and took the dart posts out of the shells so that now it shoots half-length darts. And I will say shooting half-length darts does give you quite an advantage over shooting full-length darts because the, the way that these shells work is that the effective barrel is like all the way down here, so the half-length darts make more use out of it and then the rest of the barrel is just free space. With that said though, it still isn't very good, and again, for all the trouble that I went through trying to modify this thing, I just don't think it was really worth it, because it is still the same shell strike with a little bit of a performance boost, and I sat there for nearly three hours trying to get the ARs out of this thing, so I don't know. It might be worth modding for you, especially if you have something like a drill or a dremel or something that you can reach really far into small, tight places, but otherwise, it might just not work for you at all. Next up, we've got L2. Toro. Once again, very similar situation, but this one has an extra amount of wasted potential because it actually did work super good for about a day. When the gasket seal was perfect, I was getting 
150 FPS average shots out of this with half length darts, and I'm not even making that up or exaggerating that at all. It was outperforming my Nexus Pro when I put both of them out on a long range, but quickly I realized that the gasket was not holding up, and over time the gasket has just created a big gap where there's no air seal whatsoever. And for that reason, I have taken one of the springs out of this because it did have two springs layered on top of each other. Again, ARs removed, dart posts removed, you kind of get the point from here on, but I also gave it a massive spring upgrade that made the hammer really, really hard to pull down, but gave it really good performance. On top of that, I love this paint job, and I would genuinely love to use this thing as a cosplay piece. Unfortunately, it's kind of unusable now until I get a new gasket, though, so yeah. Next up, we have the Delta Trooper Plus. This is a blaster that I thought had a lot of potential right at the start, and I tried to modify it, and it didn't go the best because this priming handle does not like to come off. I actually have no idea how the Hasbro engineers put this thing together in the first place, but I am not going to ask. All that matters is that now it hits the same ranges as a standard rival blaster into the mid 100s to high 90s range, which is perfectly fine. Most of the issues with this mod now just come down to the actual blaster itself, the fact that it doesn't have a skinny pusher, so I have to have a magazine in it at all times unless I want to dry fire it and damage the plunger tube, which I really, really don't want to do and really don't recommend. Again, AR removed, dart post removed, even though there's not really much point to that because half-length darts fire like a potato cannon out of this thing. You can't really get good ranges out of half-length darts if they even leave the barrel at all, but it was still fun to mod this thing nonetheless, so I can't really complain too much. I'm happy with how this is now, and the only cosmetic details I've changed is painting Nerf and Delta Trooper on the other side. Next up, we've got the Brainsaw Plus, and I'm really surprised that I'm even talking about this thing again because of how bad this blaster actually is, but honestly, being able to at least make it look good is good enough for me. That's not saying the performance is still good or anything. The performance is still terrible. The ergo is still terrible. The function is still ridiculous, even though I fixed it with this zip tie here, but the paint job makes it look badass as all hell, and that is something that I am happy with. I even painted the other side because Hasbro couldn't be bothered to. I would never in a million years use this thing in a Nerf war, even though it genuinely looks good now, and I genuinely really like the appearance, but I'm happy that it does something. I did take the dart posts out, even though I couldn't take the air restrictor out, and I plan on giving it a spring upgrade in the future, even though that really won't do much. But yeah, the brain saw plus. Next, we've got Panthera. This is a panther kind of thing, and it was meant to look like kind of an Atlantis-themed blaster, I guess, because of just like the cosmetics and stuff like that, but I don't know. I don't know what to feel about the actual cosmetics of this thing. I think it looks fine. But at the same time, I probably wouldn't want to use this blaster just because another build coming up is substantially better in just about every single possible reasonable way, except for the capacity. I think eight darts is better than five darts, and I just spoiled it. It's a hammer shot, but I'll show you that in a little bit. This blaster works just fine. Again, ARs, dart posts, and a bit of a spring upgrade, so it actually shoots a little bit harder than it did before. On top of that, the hammer prime has been relubricated, so it is very, very smooth now, and it works very well. It hits low 80s, which is very nice for something like this, but I just don't like the grip. That just comes down to the blaster itself, not my mod. Next, we've got the Judge Plus. This thing is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever made in my entire life and has been on my bucket list of things to do for actual years. Since I bought this thing in the first place and realized how cool it was, it has been on my bucket list as you need to mod this and it's been at the back of my head for years. I'm actually very glad that I modded it because it's pretty cool modded. It's able to shoot six darts now instead of just three if you put half-length darts in it, and it outperforms its original self by a landslide. It literally gets double the performance as it originally did, plus I think it looks sick in the black and gold color scheme. I think this is one of the very very few blasters that genuinely looks good gold. It really embraces the steampunk-esque aesthetic that it originally went for, and I don't know, I just think this blaster looks great. It really is great. I didn't mean to dry fire, I thought if I held the trigger, it doesn't really matter. Next we've got El Zorro, a very surprising mod because it came from a Roblox blaster. This is a mod of the Roblox Jailbreak pistol, which is 
honestly one of the dumbest, most stupid blasters ever existed. But now that I've actually done something with it, it's actually a pretty good hammer action jolt. I took the little nub thing off of the top so it now easily fits into holsters, which is kind of what I wanted this for. I want to put it like in my pocket or something here to just like be able to just whoop, pull it out and shoot. It only shoots one dart, no AR, no spring upgrade even, and it still outperforms its original self by quite a bit. I honestly can't complain with this mod. On top of that, I lubricated it and it is super buttery smooth now. I love this thing, even though it's still kind of useless for most situations. Next, we've got the Negotiator Plus, a blaster that I really, really liked at the start, and now I absolutely adore. It looks so much better in the gold and black color scheme that the judge looks good in, and this one has been heavily lubricated to make it smooth like butter, and it works so well. I love this blaster already. It just feels good. It works good. It's very cool looking, and now the blaster without ARs, without the dart post, and with a slight spring upgrade, not too much. I'm just stretching the spring a little bit and replacing it with a bigger one, it works so much better. This is a blaster that I would love to field as a slung secondary. I mean, it's got a sling loop right there. Just have it like be a small secondary, especially if it's a pistol war. This thing would dominate pistol wars with how good it is, even though there is one that I have that I think would be better at doing pistol wars with, which is a Lobo, a hammer shot mod, which phase one foam gave me, though I did enhance a little bit. I had a little bit more lubricant and I tried to put a bigger cylinder in here, but that really didn't work at all. And other than that, he gave me this front shell upgrade thing and I painted it I modded it up myself and it is just a dream now it shoots low 80s it's not the best performer out there but honestly it works very well for what it's trying to do and I would gladly field this as my sidearm I really really love this blaster quite a bit the grips comfortable the trigger is nice even though one of the things that I really want to get for it just to finish the mod off completely is a metal hammer and a metal trigger that would make this thing perfect in every way. But there is one more blaster that I already think is just about perfect in every way. The Tesseract here is one of my favorite things that I own all together. And that is really saying something because I have a lot of stuff here as you can probably tell. But this genuinely is one of my favorite things, not just because the blaster itself is very nice and very good and it's got a freaking tactical real flashlight on it, it looks very good and works very nice, but also just the fact that I was able to construct this thing myself from scratch means something huge to me. And the only, like, the only aid that I had in making this was Phase 1 Foam donating the vector kit right here and letting me know what some of the parts were, as well as my dad helping me to solder things together. Everything else, I did myself, and I am very proud of this thing. I love this blaster more than I can reasonably explain on camera. If you want more details, go check out my review, which, by the way, Check out what I've added. I did the custom magazine, just like I said I would, and just like I thought, it looks perfect. This looks amazing in my opinion, and this flashlight really does it justice because it's like flush with the shell. It looks so good, it works so good. The Tesseract is one of my favorite things. It is absolutely the, my favorite blaster in my whole collection right now. That might change sooner or later, but I really don't know. This is really cool. But that's basically all my mods. So yeah, that's all of the blasters that I am in the process of or have modified before ranked on my channel. Granted that the work in progress mods aren't really ranked as high as the fully completed mods because I haven't finished them yet. I still have things that I want to add to them and that I'm planning on adding to them to make them absolute top notch and perfect for my arsenal. But that is for future me to figure out all these blasters I have hoped to review at least once on my channel. I kind of missed out on doing that with the jailbreak pistol and the, uh, the, the, the trailblazer, but it doesn't really matter because those blasters weren't very good to begin with. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching this video, everybody.